How's it going, guys? Dre here, and welcome back to Sunday. That means we're playing some more of the best Besiege creations. Now, this week, we are starting off with a dump truck, but more specifically, actually, I wanted to check out this map. It looks really good. It is basically just a testing map for your vehicle. So you got jump test, suspension test, wheel incline test, sky launch test, build zones, uh, max compression test, all that fun stuff. And it actually, like, it's pretty detailed, as you can see. You can see the different jump angles and everything. And, uh, yeah, this is a very big map. This is the build zone over here, I guess. Oh, that's smart, because then you, it's nice and open, so you can look underneath your vehicle while you're building it. So even if you want to build a vehicle... This is a really impressive test. And there is a climb test. Okay, so it looks like this is the climb test over here. So today we're going to be testing out the Dung Thing 140 dump truck. This thing looks very, very detailed and it looks kind of off roadish. Uh, so I figured we'd check it out. Basically, I wanted to focus on a detailed truck. And as you can see, this one's got a lot of detail going on. So. Uh, this was made by a Chinese creator, and uh, I do not know, know how to control it, so we're just going to have to figure it out as we go. Now, okay, so that's how to use the actual back dump. Oh, man, if I could put a bunch of bombs in there, I mean, we, we can turn this into a weaponized creation. But there we go. Now, I don't know how to close the doors, so... Oh, hey, when you start up the vehicle, they close. That's smart. Okay, so we're good to go now, and we have a very big dump truck. So let's go. This thing actually looks like it has good suspension. Let's go check out the suspension test over here. So being that this really isn't an off-road design, let's go... Wow, this thing doesn't even look like... Is there bumps here? These are very small bumps. Okay, it's... I mean, at least it has off-road wheels on it, so it should be able to take this with no problem. At, I hope I didn't need that. Is that my friggin' engine? What was that? Okay, well, I'm still able to drive it, so... God damn, what was that thing? I'm very curious now. Uh, oh, that's one of my gas tanks. That's not good. But, uh, hey, we... What? How do... What? All right, so sorry for my confusion. I actually understand what happened now. There's a respawn at the end of these, so you don't get stuck back here, which is extremely smart, actually. So, uh, this is a really good testing course. Now, I think this is a little bit too much for the old dung thing here. Actually... I mean, if we give it a little bit of gas and really try, we, we lost another one of our gas tanks. That's okay. We have two of those anyways. So we'll just have to flip on the other one. We're so close. We just got to get over this. So there we go. We actually did do the hardest suspension test. And I got to say, for a dump truck, that's pretty damn impressive. All right, what do we want to do next? There's so many different things we can try. All right, there's no way we're going to be able to do those ones, I don't think. Let's start with 30, and let's do an incline test. This should be okay with this dump truck. Oh, a little bit of a hit there. Oh, yeah, no problem at all. We might actually be able to do... I don't think we can do the final one, but the other one we might be able to do. Is this not going to reset me? Oh, no. Oh, it makes you fall back down on this one. I should have known that. All right, let's just go straight to 55. I'm going to give it all the gas it's got, but... Oh, man, it actually... I'm amazed it even got that far, but no, that's too much for it. Now, 40 we should be able to do, though, which is surprising because it's a very heavy dump truck, but uh, it's built for the off-road, clearly. Sorry, dude, I realize you're there to tell me what I'm doing, but uh, I just ran you over like a jerk. Oh, yeah, 40. 40, we just have it, but that's enough to do it. And as long as we don't bottom out at the top here, which we did, uh, I mean, that's technically done it, right? Oh, God, that's not good. Okay, we're just going to... Yeah, we're totally gonna fall down. So a sky launch test sounds really fun. Is that up? I don't think that's up here. How are we gonna get over to that? Okay, well, we're gonna do the 10 degree jump because I don't want to destroy my vehicle. We should be able to get quite a bit of air anyways. What is this over here? Oh, is this the... Oh, this must be the compression test. Uh, 8 meters from the ground, 10 meters from the ground. Yeah, you know what? That's just gonna destroy me. I don't know who would want to do a compression test on a vehicle unless you want to see it get destroyed. So we're gonna do the sky launch test. Because that sounds like a funner way to destroy a vehicle. Uh, am I supposed to just, like, bottom out here and go up? What am I supposed to do here? I'm supposed to be over there? No, that's the build zone. So what? Sky launch test? This isn't good. This is... I didn't even make it up there. I'm, I don't think I'm supposed to go that way. Or am I? Because there's, like, another way up over here. And then you can drive along here, it looks like. But there's also these things over here. So I was wondering if I... I wonder if I'm supposed to do that. Uh, oh, that is actually a sky launch test. Okay, so it's literally just gonna shoot me up. I'm assuming I'm assuming green's the easiest, so I'm not gonna be able to line this perfectly, but... All right, beam me up, Scotty. Let's do this thing. Oh, God, that's gonna crush me. That's gonna crush... Oh, my poor dump truck! What the hell? Oh, God, now it's going up. Okay, so it literally 
just launches you into the sky. All right, we have to try the red zone, though. That one was actually nice. We might be able to survive this, and hopefully we can so we can do the red zone. There we go. A little bit of a fender bender. No big deal, though. Okay, big, bigger deal than I thought. We got a, we, we definitely have a missing wheel here. All right, I'm hoping to hit the red. Oh, this is a bigger dump truck than I thought. You know what? Can I actually... Oh, there we go. All right, do it! There we go! That went better than I thought, actually. I mean, I'm missing all my front wheels now, but that's the whole point. So, yeah. I, I don't know what this test is helping with, but I enjoy it. Oh! Oh, you can actually see how your suspension works. Man, oh god. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna flip her. I'm gonna fall off of it. That was actually really impressive suspension. So you can really test the, uh, the maximum distance of your suspension with this wheel incline. I can see him on the ground now. I think this one's three meters. This should be better for, you know, my dump truck right now. Oh yeah, are you not impressed? Look at that suspension. There we go. I knew you'd do good dump truck. Man, that's really, really impressive actually, as you can see. All right, so yeah, that was the testing course. I'll probably use this for a lot of our off-road vehicles because definitely it is off-road focused. It looks like we actually have a rock crawling area up here too. I didn't even notice. The more I look around, the more there is. There's actually also, I should give the developer props because he did a great job. Pineapple seller, thank you so much. This was an amazing course. And uh, yeah, if you do want to download it, as always, links are in the description. And moving on, we have a War of Tanks. Now, this is a single-player tank game where you have to compete against the red team to defeat them. Now, this mod's actually in beta. It doesn't actually work. What you're actually supposed to do is choose one of these blue vehicles and take it and command it. Uh, I can't seem to get that to work. I've tried to do it, and I think it's just totally broken right now. So instead... I brought in the Ava 06 Coyote. I think this will be kind of fair. It looks really, really cool. It's said to be a drift tank by the developer of it. Kind of looks like a APC mixed with a tank to me, and it looks really, really cool at that. So yeah, we're going to start this up and see what happens here. So yeah, basically one point for every tank you take down, and uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a time limit or anything. We're going to give it our sh best shot, though, and see what happens. All right, and round is about to begin. Here we go. You can see my tanks moving. Now, I do not control these guys at all. They have their own uh, AI, so I'm going to try and stick up with the front lines here, but hide out enough to the point where I'm hopefully not hit. Okay, I can see why this is called a drift tank. I am drifting like crazy, and it is damn fast, as you can see, in comparison to the other tanks on the team. All right, so it looks like... Oh, we had a one-for-one one there. Uh, yeah, that guy totally died now. I'm gonna have to align my shot right. Oh man, people are dying left, right, and center right now. I'm just gonna chill here and hope for the best. We'll see what happens. All right, get out of my way, dude. Oh, 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 just over the top. Blue's gonna get in my way, unfortunately. Now, you know what? Let's see what's going on. We do have a red coming up over here, so I'm just trying to keep out of the way of my uh, teammates here. They're not very good at. Oh god, did I? I didn't kill you, did I? That, that was totally someone else, right? I am one bad commander if I've already killed a teammate here and not killed anything else. At least I don't think I killed anything else. Oh, what? What the heck? Okay, I think my teammate just blew up and his uh, shrapnel affected me there. There we go. I think that was my kill. Hard to say. We There's a lot of shooting going around. Uh, my, this tank, very hard to aim. It does like to swivel a little bit. And unfortunately... Uh, it's hard to precisely aim really, really quickly with it. I'm gonna move up a little bit. They don't seem to target me, or I'm not of utmost importance. I mean, I wouldn't target myself either. I'm, I'm missing almost all my shots here. Oh, there we go. I got another one, I think. All right, this guy over here is getting a little bit scary. Try and hit him. I bounced the shot. I got another teammate, I think, running into me here. Oh, yep, something's hitting me, as you can see. A uh, little bit frustrating, but hey, they, they have to get to the front lines too. Okay, so I think... Uh, it's hard to say which team we are. I think we're the right team, though. I hope we're winning, at least. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like you cannot hit the side of the tanks. It bounces the shot. Oh, really? I bounced that shot? And then my teammate takes it on me. So I'm quickly realizing how hard tank warfare is in this game. It's just, the game's a little wobbly. What the heck happened to that shot? Um... Yeah, I am not a very good commander, as you can... Oh, man, what's happening now? Oh, God. Oh! Oh! Oh, what happened to me? Did you guys run me over? I'm so confused. Uh, yeah, that's not good. I am totally on fire right now. So, how'd we do? Let's actually... 36 to 42 is actually a really close game. I honestly don't know which team's which. It'd be nice if there was, like, a blue or red bar or something. 
Uh, hard to tell, but a close game at that. And this is one of the first kind of single-player tank warfare games that I've seen. So, uh, yeah, definitely could use some terrain or something, but a good start. And I hope the developer continues to develop it, because uh, it's very fun to play. And Tron has made its way over to Besiege. Now, this isn't actually the Tron bike. It's called the Lotus Trackfire, though, and... Obviously, a very inspired design to the Tron vehicles. Gotta say, it looks really cool, but I think it's actually just a glorified hovercraft. Not that that's a bad thing. Let's try this thing out and see how good it is. So, should be a rather speedy one if it's a frictionless vehicle. It looks like it is. My exhausts are spinning. I don't know if those are exhausts or what this thing is. It could be antimatter or something. I mean, this is obviously a sci-fi bike. How fast were we going, actually? 250 kilometers an hour. Not bad, not bad at all. Now, the cool thing about this, I haven't actually seen this before. It's actually got lighting on it. And um, if we press a button here, why can I... Am I going so fast I can't get close to it? Oh, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Ow. <laughs> All right, let's just reset the bike. And yes, as you can see, it's got a lighting button. And you can turn that on. And now it really looks like a Tron bike. All it needs is the uh, trail. And we're good to go. So that's pretty much it with this one. I gotta say, I love the design though. I really wish I could look at it when it's going really fast. Let's see. Okay, cannot do jumps. Well, it kind of can do jumps. It's still stabilized. <laughs> and is that you in there, Walter White? This thing's called the Rust Bucket. And I gotta say, I mean, for a Rust Bucket, it is damn beautiful. Look at this thing. It's got a lot of detail on it. How fast are we going right now? I did just spin around. Uh, always curious about the speed of these things. 200 kilometers an hour. That is impressive for an RV here. Let's see if we can take any badass jumps. Uh, yeah, safe to say it can't really do that. We lost all the wheels on the one side. But yeah, we got a lot of detail on this one too. It's got a few unique features. We have headlights on this one as well. So this mod must have just came out because we can use headlights now. Uh, I wonder if we're going to have like dark maps. That would be really cool. Uh, oh, 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 God. I should really watch where I'm going. Jesus. All right. I definitely broke my front axle, but I did want to show you guys. We even have an awning here. Now, the coolest thing is we have some thrusters in the back. How that glass works, I don't know, but it's pretty damn impressive. Now, obviously, this thing's a little damaged right now, but it still looks like it's good to go. Uh, not as fast as it once was, but let's try with the thrusters and... Yes, this actually doubles the speed almost, 300 kilometers an hour, and uh, yeah, we are motoring in a motor home. Let's see, oh god, this is gonna hurt, this is, oh, there goes my wheels, there goes a, a lot of wheels, and I was gonna try and do that jump, but that was fun as well. Alright, let's try this again, this time avoid the bumpy rocks, and we don't jump enough things in this game, I feel like, so I thought we'd try this, and oh man, if we can get something that could deal with that suspension... That would be an amazing jump to try. And we got another weird plane design. That must mean it's from another anime. And yes, this is the Savia S21 Experimental Fighter Fulgore from the Japanese film Porco Rosso. And it was an anime. So this thing, I mean, the engine is on the top of it. It's a boat plane as well. Obviously, unfortunately, we don't have water in Besiege just yet. Um, well, there is modded water, but it's not. I wouldn't really consider it water. So basically, this thing's on frictionless pads. But let's see how good it is at actually flying here. Oh wow, oh wow, I am really impressed. All already, I can feel the movements. This feels really, really good. Very maneuverable, and uh, I gotta say, I'm impressed. I thought this would just be a cool one to look at, but it's also a very fun one to fly. Now, being that this is a fighter, we should have... Ooh, wow, that's actually a really cool way to do a crosshair here. We got some sort of tube in the front. Obviously, our view is rather lacking in this plane. That's the one downside. I'm going to get out of that view, actually, and not crash into the mountain. Now, this thing does have an auto cannon on it, so... Oh, wow, it actually uses fire, too, to automatically shoot this thing. Look at me taking out the whole city here. Oh, man, I almost hit my wing there. This thing's faster than it seems. How fast are we going, actually? Turn that off for a second. 300 kilometers, that's pretty decent for a prop plane. And that is pretty much it with this one in terms of controls. Very easy to fly, as you can see. We took that thing right out. Can we land this without... Okay, we, we definitely killed ourselves. I was going to try and land that and uh, do a safe landing, but uh, that didn't go so well. Gotta say, this is one of the best planes I've played with in a while, though, in terms of maneuverability. It must be because the engine's on top. I don't know... Why else this thing is so good, but it's extremely responsive, and it's also very fluid, very easy to fly. So I'm going to try and land this thing, turn the engines off a little bit, let's speed it up, there we go. Now this doesn't have wheels, but we should... Oh. <laughs> God. 
damn it. All right, let's try that again. This time we are going to try and keep the engines on. I will land this thing, damn it, because I know I can. Okay, so there we go. We got a nice long runway here. We're going to shut that engine off. There we go. Bounce a little bit. And that was a much better landing. We didn't cut the thing in half. All right, and on that, guys, we're going to wrap up another episode of the Best Besieged Creations. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, checking out a bunch of new and pretty unique designs. Now, I do want to mention I actually released another episode today of Green Hell. It's a new series on the channel, and if you haven't watched it yet, I do recommend, if you are a fan of survival games, to go check it out, because I gotta say, it's my favorite survival game ever. So you'll see a link of that at the end of this video. I just want to thank you guys for all your support. Thanks for watching and liking, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh,